chairman has been uh, involved in, uh, I guess, maybe about a year and a half. Um, and you all know that uh, there have been discussions about uh, for us to develop as a community and be uh, on for the cutting edge of technology, it's necessary that we have um, a better network. And the map that you have for you there really is just uh, to indicate perhaps a skeletal framework that would consist of the city and the county, Dallas uh, State, South Georgia Medical Center, uh, the Georgia Military Smith Wiregrass, and the outlying cities, as well as your industrial parks, to all be served. Now, we also went through and gave you information on the various Types of whether it's uh, DSL, cable modem, fiber wire, satellite, etc. And uh, this is information that Paige pulled up and all of that is really just intended to be informational only and uh, turn to the next to the last or to the last page you will see um, reference made to Valdosta by this uh, publication, Dallas is for the fastest mid-sized city in the USA, supposedly 357. Mm -hmm. It's on page left, a range of three. Three or three. You'll see the same. Um, mm -hmm. Now, uh, there are a number of providers here. We see that there are like, 10. Um, and I have asked Aaron to verify this information for us, and um, it, it really varies. While you say there are 10 providers, that doesn't mean there are 10 providers spending drive. Some are active in some areas, some are active in other areas, and so forth, so it really varies. But the intent of the map was to show you that if these entities uh, are in a position to provide financing to help connect all of these entities together. Now you have the framework of uh, a system whereby there could be a private-public partnership to enhance for the industries or businesses because we, we know that we've lost, I said we've lost some business uh, and the industry have said, well, we're not going to go there because we go to Thomasville, they got quicker um, certain projects. <laughs> so it is an issue. Uh, we've got uh, Mark and Clay, uh, people from the Lake Park area who have contacted us and said, look, we, we can't get uh, broadband service in certain areas here. Uh, yeah, they can't use a credit card. <coughs> so those issues uh, are something that y'all need to pay to be aware of. Let, let me, if I can, with this, and there's, and, and you'll have to forgive me because I really don't have all the terminology to all of this technology, but there's a big difference, or there's a difference between broadband speed, internet speed, and capacity. Uh, and, and our issue here, as documented, is not necessarily the speed. It's a capacity issue. And if you go back and, and kind of look at the issues of just what you're talking about, because I've discussed this one the, about the middle store area level. Mr. Pritchard brought it up yesterday that there are certain areas that if you drop your service, for example, if you have AT&T and you drop your service, you can't get it back. 
because that's how they're controlling the capacity is that they control the amount of users that gets on the system so they can maintain the speed by controlling the users is ultimately it's what's happening. More so users, the slower the speed. The yeah, more you get on there, the more users they are, then the slower it gets. So they're able to maintain the speed in the areas where they really need speed, that speed is a concern, but at, at, at that event, they are losing capacity. One issue is Moody Air Force Base. Uh, because of the situation that they have out there right now, along with altitude, uh, the, the wing commander out there has a concern that his young airmen uh, don't have the connectivity out there or the speed or the capacity uh, basically to stay entertained, if that's, if that's the way I can put it. I mean, we know how the young people are now. They spend tons of time on the computers, on games, and whatever they may be doing, social networking, and all the above. So his concern is, is that the young airmen out there end up with too much time on their hands because, because they can't have this connected. Um, and as you, come, as you come back into the community from where the, the real big issue is, is, is that with, from an economic development standpoint, if you have to wait for somebody to drop off the system in order for you to be able to get on the system, and then depending on the capacity needs that you have, because these people are not, they are not upgrading the infrastructure that's in place. The old wired systems that they have now, single cable, basically if we know cable, uh, they're not being upgraded to fiber optics because that's so expensive. Yes, my theory. You've got folks, and I'm not just picking on the ones that I know. AT&T, for example, um, I believe that their model is, is becoming that in the high population areas, you're going to probably see, because they have some infrastructure, you'll see infrastructure improvements, and you'll see fiber and some of those things come about. Rural areas, the infrastructure is too expensive to get it out there. That's the reason why I pay close attention to it. They're going out there now and they're buying satellite TV providers so that they can provide those same services but on a wireless connection rather than on a wired connection. Now the problem is, is that they will tell you that everything you need is available. It's just it gets expensive to provide which means that if you need wireless, I mean, if you can live with wireless, then you get a wireless system. But I don't quite understand the connectivity, and, and, we, and I'm going to take another step a little bit further with it. And Mr. Marshall, you had mentioned about that a lot of the fiber that the county uses is tied in with fiber in the city. You know, is, is the technology moving to the point to where the needs will all eventually be served from a wireless satellite connected system and is that what we need to look for. 25 years ago, Thomasville, Thomas County made an investment in the infrastructure which has paid huge benefits for them today. If you take Thomasville today and they made that investment such as Valdosta, would the technology be changed in five years to the point of where what you've got is you won't even, you know, not even need it? Is that the direction that the industry is going in? Um, I, I think where we're at with this is that from a community standpoint, from economic development, and how we serve the citizens and some of these things, we need to at least ratchet up our, our uh, research, you might say, on where are we going with broadband, high speed, high capacity internet connections for our community? What is the coming thing? Where do we need to? Where are we going to be five years from now? Because again, there's no need, and, you know, I've looked at it, I had talked with a company to put a fiber ring 
through Lowndes County that would create some connectivity to where even the other communities can connect, Val Austin would connect, $40 million. Really? Yeah. Huge. You know, so if that technology changes in five years, that's that's a bad pay off of forty million dollars and people yeah. will jump off your network. That's it. Yeah. yeah, so it's bad. Yeah. yeah. So again, we it's there because broadband is still an issue for our community from the economic development and from the quality of life for the citizens of, of Glass County. You know, <clears throat> do we want to continue to move down this road? To, to do the research, to do the follow-up, to find out what's coming, what's going to happen. And then it, at some point in time, do we get to a point that we would have to begin to make decisions in a lot of things out there that I'm going to use to take the TV out to type technology. Do we begin to make a decision to say, you no longer have the franchise or you're moving away from everything but TV or whatever that whatever their services they're going to provide, we're now going to let another provider come in if we have the ability to do that. But I think that that's the research that we need to begin to move forward on, getting that data and giving staff some direction to take a look at that picture. Does our guy know what's going on? Our guy probably knows what's going on 30 years from now that you'll build. But he's on top of the game. Yeah. <laughs> and in addition to uh, Aaron and Aaron's staff, Paige is involved from uh, the Clerks uh, Association um, and will be involved in the program half and mm -hmm. I believe later on this year. So we'll it's actually coming up in a couple weeks. Um, I think huge to the chairman's point, this is something that is going to not only be a regional approach, but it's a statewide approach to make our state stronger all over. And there are a lot of the rural areas or communities in Georgia that just don't understand what you said initially. It's not just that you have it, it's the quality of what you have and what that capacity is. So there is an education program that's been funded through some grant monies at the state level to educate local government representatives, um, department heads across the state on the importance of broadband, how that um, affects the economic development across our state, and how we can put those roads around and start connecting to other communities to make all of us more competitive. So I have been part of developing a curriculum that will go to all of the county and city clerks um, this month in Athens, and then from there it will branch out to department heads. And it's been tweaked whether or not it's being shown to public works directors or for engineers or other um, department level positions to kind of show the importance that it helps in the services that they're responsible for delivering so that all these representatives can come back to their local communities and work on projects to be able to see who the stakeholders are and how we can network those funds together. Eventually, I don't think that any one entity is going to be able to come up with the funding that's required for this project, but if we all find that common ground and how we can work together, then the avenues that we do have, we may be able to mesh those together and, and make this part. Um, we have had some conversations and we've seen with uh, AT&T representative, uh, Courtney Benson, and um, we have also met with uh, a couple of different ones. Aaron and I, to answer your point, have discussed this on a couple of occasions. Um, Yes, we can we can move uh, at whatever speed and whatever degree your pocketbook can afford. So I know you're all tired of hearing me say that, but I think it's just important to yeah. be to remind you of that. There are some uh, programs throughout the state. There's one in uh, Blue Ridge that is a uh, regional uh, program that's developed. Sure, it's on the coincidence that's where the speaker of the house is from. Mm -hmm. so, it, it has been done in those areas, and it's probably something uh, that we can uh, look at and try to pattern after. But it will take a, a cooperative effort. And there's a group of uh, community, what do we call it? Community assessment yeah. group. It's, it's the number of 
key community leaders that uh, the chairman and the mayor have called together a couple of times, and one of the issues that has been before that group is the need for uh, an enhancement in this area. So, I think I think we move in the right direction. Uh, the Dallas uh, uses uh, along some of the same lines that the community, I mean, Department of Community Affairs. Uh, had brought four or five hundred just over a year or so ago, and they gave this presentation about grants, and that's when I started looking into that local enterprise opportunity zone that I was because they will actually provide, um, incentivize, uh, say, uh, at and or whatever company, broadband company, to be in that rural area or the rest of the area. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, that, and that's really the key. What, what I'd like to see is that is again. Uh, would that be, is that a goal that we would want to continue to address? Um, and you know, so that staff knows that this is something that they need to continue to pay attention to, continue to uh, continue to get information back from IT and other resources so that we, that will be able to give us some direction as commissioners and as a community and what we need to be looking for in the future as far as broadband capacity and speed. Um, again, the last thing you want to do is make a bad investment. But if it comes down to it at a time and it, and it becomes apparent that an investment needs to be made for the future of our community, we need to be able to have that information at our hands as soon as we can so that we can begin to make that decision. We have uh, two more items before we begin.